Hello everybody, my name is Lukáš Doktor, I'm from a Vert team from Red Hat Czech and today I'd like to talk about, about Q Performance Regression CI. I sent this email proposal for a regular upstream performance testing more than half a year ago. I explained the motivation there, which in short is that although developers occasionally check some commits they consider important for performance regressions or changes, and we do some regular uh, performance CI. Uh, uh, we still hit some of the issues uh, only late uh, during the pre-release uh, performance testing. And it's already too late to really discover what caused this uh, change. And we would like to change it. Uh, so we would like to inspire from the CI what, what it did like 5 to 10 years ago where it moved to upstream, closer to development, uh, ideally each build, which still is not our goal, because it's not that easily done with, with the performance due to hardware limitations. Uh, again, described in that email. Uh, but really to move closer, to ideally pinpoint uh, all those individual changes to be able uh, to this, uh, decide whether the change is imp uh, important enough to cause this uh, change. To limit the scope, I'm not talking about uh, TCG performance, I'm not talking about low-level uh, stuff. I'm really interested in system-wide uh, full-blown OS uh, testing, like FIO or UPerf running inside the guest. Uh, there was a short discussion uh, and it vanished to nowhere. Important outcome was that first nobody is aware of anybody or was aware of anybody doing that and nobody was aware of any tool that uh, would simplify this or allow doing us uh, that. Uh, so I went ahead and created this uh, set of tools uh, around uh, that uh, that can be run in the CI as well as locally. So how the workflow could look like? Uh, everything started with a developer who sends a patch Eventually it gets merged and accepted somewhere uh, in a branch. Uh, we can detect that, uh, run our pipelines and hopefully eventually detect a change. Uh, I overlook this, uh, run a bisection job between the two uh, points, uh, maybe limiting the set of tests only to those affected. And the bisection, hopefully, if it's reliable enough, it uh, finds out uh, the regression, or in this case, the improvement. Now I can create uh, some report. Uh, like the minimum, what I can imagine that should be there is some detailed information about that. Sorry, nbd.file file to be able to run the same file test uh, easily the libvirt xml files if they are used and the bisection report uh, with all those informations. Don't be scared, you don't usually use the first table because uh, it's just some metadata section. You don't usually need the group such as either because this is mainly for managers but you do you should pay attention to the list of failures because uh, there you can uh, see basically build per each uh, commit qm uh, uh, hash and you can see the uh, relative uh, score or sorry relative percentage uh, uh, of the throughputs uh, compared to the baseline to the first commit now sometimes this can be enough to say yes this is because uh, we changed it, it cannot be differently. Sometimes it may not be that easy and you may want to be able to reproduce things so you can either just use the files I just mentioned to create your guest based on the libvirt uh, xml uh, hopefully install or, or dependencies correctly and run a file manually uh, which is good if you know what you're doing and, and if you have already some setup in place and uh, you're prepared for that. If uh, not and you just want to uh, give it a try, you can use runperf. I 
either just install it and use the same set of uh, the same command that was used in uh, in the CI, or you can modify it a bit to maybe simplify the setup for you. Where you get the command, it's in the metadata section. You can see there are all A's, which means all of uh, the builds use the same runperf command. On Hoover, you can see the full command, uh, which is, you know, kind of longish. Don't worry, you can remove most of it, just cross it out. But you should pay attention to the red parts. Uh, what do they mean? First, uh, the hosts uh, is the most important part. As I mentioned, perf testing is hard and we cannot just give those machines to everybody. So if you want to rerun it, you need to rerun it on your machines. So you need to specify the host that this uh, will run on. It's not running on your uh, on the machine where the run perf is executed. Could be, but it's not by default. Uh, then you uh, may want to tweak the distribution. Uh, if you don't use the same one, uh, you may, for whatever reasons, you may want to use your own distro. Uh, it's only used if you use a provisioner to provision the hosts, uh, or if you're using VMs throughout during the testing, uh, because it can fetch the CloudNet images and uh, like prepare them for the execution. In the same way in the CI as well as in your laptops or on your <coughs> machines. <coughs> Sorry. So the default passwords uh, is only used if you don't have SSH keys exchanged uh, and it's used as a default password for guests that are created. And for path we are gonna talk about it a bit later. So now you modify the runperf commands. Let's say here I'm using Fedora with some password. I remove most of the profiles using on localhost and running a limited subset of file and BD tests because I don't need to run the full long uh, command and I want to run it quickly. So I run this once, then I deploy a different QEMU version on the ho target host, not on my localhost, but on that target host. Run the same command again. Those commands are gonna create results underscore something uh, results. I can do that multiple times and then I can use compare perf to compare them. Uh, with minus vv uh, it shows you some uh, information about the individual failures or individual results uh, in the console but still I would uh, suggest using the minus minus html uh, where you can create beautiful HTML page with all of the informations. Uh, hopefully you are able to reproduce everything. You can uh, start coding and afterwards uh, confirm that your change, uh, your fix actually uh, fixes this issue. Now I mentioned the minus minus uh, path. Uh, so the first time uh, setup may require some uh, metadata. Uh, installing is as simple as pip install, although I would suggest using master. And again, run perf usually does not run on that machine where you run it. Uh, it's using uh, it's it's a, that's a controller, and you usually specify one or multiple hosts uh, using the minus minus hosts command and it should not modify your laptop unless you specify it as a host obviously but it will definitely modify the minus minus hosts machines uh, most of the changes are reverted especially the profiles that are applied that are, they are usual they are always reverted but it may not remove all all the dependencies etc so do that on your uh, testing machines if, uh, although I mentioned that, uh, mentioned that your localhost machine, your laptop won't be modified, you can still use a container which we are shipping as well. But what do you need to, pref uh, to prepare before the first execution is uh, uh, results or, or sorry, is uh, a database of your hosts, so the machines that are used during the testing. Uh, the information we're looking for is, for example, the architecture, 
huge page size, uh, how many hosts, how many guest CPUs you want to use, memory, so those things. Some of them could be probably obtained from the machine, we're not doing it at this point, but if you would be interested in that, just let me know, I can add that uh, at some sensible default, but at this point you need to have hosts slash uh, hostname dot yaml file with those uh, with those data prepare before the first execution. Now that would be it for the local uh, reproduction. Now let's take a look at the CI. Normally I'm using Jenkins uh, for everything, but as I mentioned, it's behind the firewall, so you cannot actually access it. You cannot uh, download the uh, artifacts from it. What you can do is, uh, you can take a look at documentation where I have all of the pipelines as well as the JJB configuration uh, available and you can just deploy it on your Jenkins instance, uh, tweak the hosts section and the set of tests and start testing yourself. Now, you cannot access the assets there which means I wanted to make something to have it available for you. Uh, I did this uh, little dashboard or just you know a table where each build, uh, when it finishes, it just pushes the status there for you and attaches the XML file as well as some machine readable results, uh, like more detailed machine readable results. Uh, it's available and in there you can find the HTML file, which you saw earlier uh, in the report. Although this one should be usually very boring, like because all of the tables should be empty, except of the metadata, uh, unless you change the filters, because by default you only show uh, errors. And you have the XZ file, which contains uh, the machine readable results. You can see the structure, you have uh, the profile, in there you have folder with a pair each test and in their per each serial number of the test. Majority of the tests are using pbench to drive the test ex execution. Uh, for those who don't know, pbench is a test suite that allows you to run performance uh, tests, testing. What I like about it the most is that it generates uh, those result of JSON uh, file which is machine readable. Uh, and it uses the same format for all tests. Second, it gathers the background system information. And maybe third is that uh, quite a big portion of Red Hat is using it. Uh, so when I when I find a regression or some, want some if I want them to investigate it, I just send them those results, uh, and they can use their tools to. Uh, Overview. Next to it, I have run perf metadata because pbench is not aware of VMs uh, or not to the point that uh, we would like. So the run perf metadata contains, for example, the set of packages that were installed, the mitigations that are there, uh, whatever configuration was changed uh, in order to be able to reproduce it easily, or or just to see the differences in the report. Uh, those two files per, prof per test is not obviously everything. Uh, each build is about 2 gigs of data, which we store up to 14 days, where we have the IOSTAT, MPSTAT, UPERF, uh, like PERF uh, reports, etc. We may be able to send these if, uh, if necessary for comparison to you, although I'm not sure whether NDA wouldn't be necessary. If uh, you just need some serial console output or journals, maybe libvirt uh, logs, we can send these easily via email uh, on demand, especially for regressions and things like that. These are available for a longer time. Now the current coverage. Uh, so what do we test currently? 
only x86, uh, 64. We have uh, four profiles uh, local just to make sure that the hardware is not changing. Default library, which is just word install, give me a machine and use it, so the out of the box experience. The same with multi, uh, multiple machines uh, where we use the same amount of CPUs but split into multiple VMs. Uh, everything is of, of course customizable, customizable. And TuneClip Word, which doesn't mean it's tuned to be fast, it just allows you to supply XML file. And in this XML file, I'm focusing on different features like NUMA pinning, uh, strict uh, like C, uh, C groups, uh, huge pages, just different configuration, not, uh, not faster. As for the test selection, Theo Uperf uh, Linpack with uh, really uh, not enough, uh, like with a limited set of uh, configurations. Uh, and FIO NBD, which is a special case for uh, of FIO run uh, with NBD backend. And even this limited set of profiles and tests takes 12 hours to execute uh, in order to have stable results. So like we are, I am using three samples, for example, per, per test. As for the plans to the future, I would like to better integrate with upstream. Uh, what that means is uh, I would like uh, to have uh, the perf CI reports uh, available in in GitLab, ideally, uh, just you know cross or uh, check mark that uh, this build was tested, and most important, more importantly for me, I would like to get a feedback of uh, what is more important to you, whether this makes sense to you at, at all. Uh, what tests and profiles should I use, whether it's sufficient or whether I should uh, improve or maybe remove uh, unnecessary stuff. Uh, what background information should I be collecting, because every tool that I run in the background uh, is useful later if uh, a regression is fine, found, uh, especially if it's not 100% reproducible. But on the other hand, it influences uh, the execution. So. Advice on that would be welcome as well. And uh, one more thing is adding other architectures. So I tested successfully ARM. It works basically out of the box. Uh, so it's a matter of getting the hardware and starting uh, using it regularly. One more thing I played with is the latest kernel pipeline. Uh, at this point, I'm running a stable version of RHEL uh, and you're replacing the QMO with, uh, with the current master, which is fine for user space testing, like the QMO user space part, but we're not really testing the KVM uh, part. So I think it would make sense to add this pipeline, maybe to only run with the latest kernel as well as QMO, so do let me know how important that is uh, in your eyes. And uh, if anybody is interested in trying this, uh, I'm here to help. And I'm focusing on the documentation to make it as safe for it as possible. Last thing that came up very recently is that I learned about this initiative at Red Hat uh, where we want to make a Beaker machines, some like a beaker, beaker lab available to communities. If you think that you would benefit from having perf CI in there, I can pursue that and maybe uh, get a machine from them and be able to for in order to let developers uh, to issue builds like saying I want to check this build without uh, the need of. Uh, doing any setup. That's it from me. Uh, I'm really looking for a feedback and ideally I would like the feedback to be on QMU Devel mailing list so people can be involved. So see you.